And recording. Are we on? <laughs> yes, yes we are. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> you, you sound so excited, I can't believe it. Sorry, I was looking at some things that are, we will talk about later. Ooh, things for later. Also, I mean, again, uh, to counteract... Counteract? To... Sure. To, what's the, the opposite of last week's podcast, where we recorded, like, early in the day? Mm-hmm. We're now recording way late. It is 10.36 p.m. on a Thursday. <laughs> on a Thursday. Is on that a... Thursday. Oh, no, I'm thinking on a Tuesday, aren't I? Yes. I know music songs. Yeah, hip-hop and such. <laughs> And things other we'll slowly discover is I don't really get popular music. Mm. Like my my listening recently has been to Hatsune Miku, who's a fake digital pop star. Like I can't say I know who that is. It's it was a, I don't know what the whole backstory is. Like I'm very vague on it, but the whole concept is it's. I mean, you can compare it to like Siri or any of those like voice synthesized systems where it's they write her music and like choreograph everything digitally, like an anime music video. Yes, but okay. it's literally a fictional character who is the persona behind this band, this group, this lead singer. Ah, huh. like that's if you, to, if you go to EB Games in the mall now, they sell little figures of her. Really? I like, did not realize this was such she's, a movie. Uh, been around for years. I know she did a concert. Um, uh, Andrew, who did the art for her podcast, was at her concert. Oh, small world. Yeah. Everything comes um, together. That's in a band I follow recently remixed one of her songs, and I was like, oh, this is kind of catchy. And I went through some of her other stuff, and the remixes are really good, because hmm. it's all digital. It's easy to get the files and play with. Oh, that's cool. If you listen to any of the songs of the regular ones, you can hear it sounds like a much more stylized version of Siri, where it's, you can hear it's clearly digital. Oh, okay. Well, that's something. By so, the way, if anyone's wondering what we're drinking, uh, nothing yes. fancy. Just Alexander Keith's Red. But inhale and died. <laughs> R.I.P. in peace. <laughs> oh, God, wow, that really hurt for no reason. Um, I, I'm not mistaken. Keith's is a Quebec brew, isn't it? I want to say... The Pride of Nova Scotia. I'm yeah. gonna say never mind. That's it. I was about to say Maritimes. I just couldn't remember if it was Nova <laughs> Scotia or like. But yeah. Who am I? Uh, there's another popular beer that's Quebec brew, isn't it? I mean, there's a there's a couple. There's like Uni Brew and like things like that. Quebec has a a bursting beer scene, you know. Yeah, no, we're a pretty fun town like that. Uh, yeah. I know. I was saying before the show, I was mentioning. I think it's uh, next uh, two Fridays from now, or the next Friday is um, Beer Fest down in Montreal. Yes, next Friday is Beer Fest, and I will hopefully be checking it out at some point. I think I'll be around. I unfortunately worked late that night. I didn't foresee this. However, again, showing the opposite of the two of us, I will be missing Beer Fest, but the 11th I am off and going to Montreal's Pokemon Festival. Ah, uh, yes, the 11th I'm out of town. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would drop by that either way. I, did, I, I, did. I, don't, I don't think it's your scene. I mean, the Pokemon, I, was, I, I had my time. You know, with with Pokemon, like it was it was a thing. It was an era. Uh, you know, I don't remember how old I was, but definitely it was it occupied a, of time in my life. But that time is not now. Yeah, I, I kind of look back at it a bit fun just to kind of uh, reminisce about Pokemon was um, a, another artist I enjoy. Uh, Katie Tiedrick d- uh, does a comic called Awkward Zombie. Mm-hmm. And I always really connected with one of the issues. So you draw it's three panels and it's just very simply playing Pokemon as an, an elementary school and it's all the kids in the food like you know in the d- d- cafeteria food court cafeteria <laughs> being all like yay Pokemon and then it's in high school and it's like sitting in the cafeteria all alone with your hoodie up playing your DS and being like is that you playing Pokemon like what the fuck mm-hmm. and then college and it's basically just an adult version of elementary school where everyone's like yay Pokemon like it's acceptable again yeah and that's exactly what I went through like elementary school was super Pokemon high school I kind of got out of it and like didn't play that generation that came out in high school and then college like we were having like weekly tournaments and like competitive strategy meetings and it's like you just met people like college where you can kind of like really realize yourself high school you had to kind of do that whole like fitting in bullshit Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just felt like this person drawn this comic and clearly had gone through the same thing I had gone through but like stuck with it a little more than I did it seems well Post secondary, it's you sort of you can find people who share your interests, whereas high school really is yeah serving the interests of the the high school bourgeoisie, you know the popular <laughs> kids, the aristocracy, the, the, bougie, the bougie high school kids. If you don't want to be like a surf or something, then you have to sort of just try and fit in. It, it's funny. Also, going back to our slang chat from last week, I didn't know that bougie was was slang for bourgeoisie. Oh yeah, and again, I'm such a goddamn nerd. My knowledge of what bourgeoisie means is from Assassin's Creed. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> the, I think it was Assassin's Creed uh, two. One of the this the 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 ones that came out afterwards with the same Ezio character. Yeah. One of the things was you would go out after the bourgeoisie, like the the upper class, the one percent who were ruling yeah. the land and like mistreating people. Yeah, you're a bit of a Robin Hood. <laughs> so it was just really funny. I never made the connection, but loved the concept of like kids calling someone like snooty, bougie, referring to them as being like aristocratic in like ancient Italy. Mm. I just feel it's such a great juxtaposition. It's it's interesting and oh my god, Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. The movie's coming out soon, December. Uh, yeah. December. Michael Fassbender. Yeah. That's Connie doing good. the music still weirds me out, but you know what? They're trying to get an audience, and again, I'm curious to see how it goes. I'll I'll give him a chance. I don't love Kanye, but I'll give him a chance. Uh, yeah. Apparently, Ubisoft's being bought out this week, though. Who's being bought out? Sorry, Ubisoft's, being, Ubisoft's being bought um, out. Hostile takeover, they're saying, or oh, being God. bought out. Like it seems weird. By Vivendi Soft, I looked up. Hmm. I was talking to a friend of ours, Trevor, who was talking about this. He's usually my go-to gaming news guy. Yeah, he would know. And uh, apparently Vivendi has a good habit of picking up companies, throwing tons of money at them, and then failing miserably. Well, that's so... Promising. Very worried about Ubisoft right now, our local Montreal game developers. Yeah, Assassin's <laughs> Creed, The Division, Far Cry. Uh, they just leaked Watch Dogs 2 is confirmed. Yeah, so... Did you ever play Watch Dogs? I never played Watch Dogs, I picked actually. it up and got, like, three missions in, and I was like, I am tired of this game already. That's fair. Apparently, The Division, they're in the very early stages of a, of a movie. Really? And Jake Gyllenhaal is going to produce and star in it. But there's no script or anything yet. It's just, it's it's happening, apparently. I'm very okay with this. I really like Jake Gyllenhaal. He's done some great work. I, I love mean, Jake Gyllenhaal. As much as people made fun of it, I kind of like this, the Prince of Persia movie he did, The Sands of Time. Yeah, some people liked it. I never saw it, um, but I heard, you know, some people liked it, some people didn't. But Jake Gyllenhaal's generally, mm-hmm. I mean, ever since Donnie Darko, I've been a fan of his, you know? Funny, I didn't love Donnie Darko. Uh, I find it's one of those you hate or you love. <laughs> I feel like I went into it with sour views. Mm. Because of how widely popular it was. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, I didn't hate it. It wasn't a bad movie. I just, I went in with, I think, like, mm. the same way you, like, with Star Wars, it's almost like you don't want to see it out of principle. Yeah. Donnie Darko for me was, like, the I won't love this because everyone does. Which is the same thing I did with Rocky Horror Picture Show when I'd never seen it. And I now must admit it's one of the greatest shows ever and I love it. You've never uh, seen it, have you? I've seen it. Don't like it? And it's just, oh God, it's the biggest, and I'm, I apologize if anyone's a big fan, well, I apologize to you also, mm-hmm. I think it's the biggest piece of garbage. Oh, but you're not I've wrong. Ever seen. And I know people are like, it's so bad, it's good. I'm like, oh no, it's not. I, okay. I, I, I don't, like, I mean, I get the mentality, I'm the same way with a lot of media where I'm like, it's so bad, but I love it. It's not so bad that it's good, it's so bad, but you love it for something, whether you love it for being bad Okay. It's not good at being bad. It's just bad, and you love how bad it is in a comedic sense. It's good to you, not good in general. Okay. Like, I will never sit and defend the cinematic quality <laughs> of that film. Good. Have you ever seen The Room, the Tommy Wiseau movie? Yeah, The Room was good. Well, The Room was good in a sense that I thought it was really funny. That's and... it. It's hilarious looking back at how garbage it is, because it's just... F- oh my god, it is just something special. But, no, Rocky Horror, I... No, I did not like it. I, I will not see it again. Uh, every time Halloween rolls around, I remind my friends, do not invite me. I will not come. It's funny. With think, extreme prejudice. Okay. I mean, I was going to say, because that's one of those things where, like, I learned to appreciate it more because of the showmanship of those live shows they do. No. Nah. Because it really is just fun, silly, and creative. It's really, it's going with a bunch of people who all get how dumb it is and making fun of how dumb it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like for someone who doesn't like it, you may even appreciate that more. I'm just going to oh. lightly back away from it. I was going to go yeah. back to Hall for a second and mention, have you ever seen this movie Source Code? No, but I know of it. Yeah. Uh, one of those movies that it came out, like the trailers and everything came out for, and I was very like, that's like a Matrix ripoff. Like, really? It's one of those movies? Like, I just, I had no... Yeah. Somehow I ended up going to see it. How, who, where, what the condition was, I ended up. It was a phenomenal movie. Yeah. And I found out last night filmed in Montreal. Really? Yeah. And directed by David Bowie's son. David Bowie's son? Yeah. She. 
Uh, it doesn't go by Bowie, uh, Duncan Jones, the name of the director. Yeah, well, David Bowie's actual name, I believe, is David Jones. I think David Bowie's just stage name. I believe there is something to, to that effect, yes, but I know that his son very much did the same thing Nicolas Cage did, which was take up a a different name to go out in the world with and not get, you know, the whole, like, oh, you're so-and-so's son, we'll give you the job. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicolas Cage, I know he was, um, I mean, he stole his name from a Marvel comic, but, um... His his grandfather or his uncle was like a big time director, like huge stuff. Like I think he worked on the Godfather even. Oh wow! So he he wanted to make a name for himself, which he has. We've all heard enough stories about him. Nick Cage, yeah, Nick Cage is he's definitely carved his own path. I think we can say. Yeah, but I was gonna bring up Sword Sword Squad because one great movie. I definitely say movie night. We should watch that one day. Okay. Uh, because who doesn't love Jake Gyllenhaal? Who doesn't love a good movie? I like Jake Gyllenhaal. There you go. But, like, a weird thing where I noticed, like, Duncan Jones hasn't made too many movies. His two biggest ones are probably Source Code and Moon, another movie I love. And I know you haven't seen I was going to say, if you and uh, Shannon haven't seen it, I'd definitely say Movie Night. Yeah. And I want Paula to watch it as well, so it could be a good, per- a good movie night. And a little double date movie night thing. He also oh, made the Warcraft movie. And that's what I was going to get to. He's, yeah. he's now Duncan made the Warcraft Jones. movie, which comes out again that same Friday, the 10th. It apparently got bad reviews. That's what I keep hearing is like iffy reviews. People have compared it to the Super Mario Brothers movie, which is... Oh, God. Another garbage movie that I still is, secretly yeah. love because it's so garbage. But the people who have, people who have seen it <coughs> who aren't like film critiques and just like it's a fun action movie and I know the video game series, so I enjoyed the references... Okay. Thought it was brilliantly done. Okay. That's the thing is that, and I guess I'll dip into like my cultural studies background here a little bit. At least that's why I like this podcast for. I like culture. Is that it really depends on how you approach a piece of pop culture. If you are a critic and you're looking at it from a purely aesthetic standpoint and you're like, does this tell, you know, how's the cinematography? How is this? How is that? How are these maybe a, a little more objective aspects? You might have a very different perception of the movie than somebody who is just a big fan of the Warcraft series and the Warcraft universe and is just watching because they're a huge fan and oh does this conform to what I expected from the movie yes no so if you're looking at it as a job and you're looking at it to assess the movie from a, like a professional standpoint you're probably going to have a different opinion like for me I'd say from age 13 to age 16 I was a huge Warcraft 3 Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. In the summer, I would get up at 7 a.m. and I would play Warcraft 3 until like 1 p.m. And then I'd probably go back on after lunch. At like, yeah, I had no life. That is legit. I like that. Yeah. Uh, World of Warcraft, I never got into. Yeah, I tried. I couldn't do it. I, I, know never, we have, I never touched it. I know we have friends and coworkers in our life who are huge into mm-hmm. it. I mean, like, one of our buddies, Joe, that dude, he's yeah. been at it for, since like... I mean, you look at the game's 10 years old. I think he's been in it for 10 years at this point. Mm-hmm. No, for me, it's all been... Uh, it was Warcraft 3. It was Battle, Battle.net mm-hmm. or uh, custom games as well. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it was just a fun time. Uh, I didn't... You know, I didn't have a lot of friends in real life. Or I did, but a lot of them were also into Warcraft 3. So we would just connect and online. That's it. Uh, my brother played also, so we would play together too. So it was, it was good times. It was a simpler time when I didn't have a job and, and shit like that. So that That's nice. it. Like, I remember there was a good chunk of time, like, when I, like, I think working at a video game store, we both actually both worked at a EB Games in our past. Yes, we did. And I feel like working there almost ruined gaming for me a little bit. Like, I was, like, uh, yeah. oversaturated with video games, even just, like, the working around them and talking about them. Yeah. That, like, when I came home at the end of the day, the idea of putting a game on was, like, a little eh. I, I, I would pick up, like, I remember picking up uh, when Smash Bros. had come out, the, uh, the one for the, the Wii originally. Okay. So the third one in the series, uh, <clears throat> Brawl? Yeah. Yeah, Brawl. I remember picking that up, coming home. Uh, I had worked till like nine that night. So it was like I picked up the morning, like that day. I came to work, picked up my copy, bagged it. Mm-hmm. Had to sell copies all day and talk about the people all day. Yeah. Got home, popped in the Wii, had like a quick bite to eat as it was like, yeah, as the Wii was booting up. Like I think I grabbed like a Pop-Tart or something. Mm-hmm. And I remember playing through the entire story and like all the side missions and all the unlockable stuff. And then right about at the end of the game, it like does like a list of like, oh, you've unlocked so and so character, you've unlocked so and so trophy, you unlocked the following achievements, and one of them was for playing like five hours, like five mm-hmm. hours of continuous gameplay, and I was like, look at the clock, I'm like, oh fuck, I have school in the morning. Yeah. 
Oh no. I just totally I've done I've only done a few games where it's totally just drained me like that, but that was one of those like great gaming memories. Yeah, I mean, if we're going on gaming memories for me, one good gaming memory also. I mean, for me, the gaming memories come from when I was able to play with people a lot. Mm -hmm. So Warcraft 3, you know, I joined a clan, I guess you could say. So it was a group of people who would generally play games together. Another game for me was actually Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Really? PlayStation 2. Yeah. This gaming history of yours, I'm loving this. Yeah. And so what would happen is you would join games and like back then all the games were like so-and-so's clan tryouts, so-and-so's clan tryouts. So I found one. I don't even remember the name of the clan. CCA maybe or something like that. CCA. Cold Canadian. Killer, Cold Killers Alliance or something like that. Or Cold Something Alliance. I'm going to say, you know Killers with a K, right? Yeah. I don't remember that. Cold, cold Canadian Alliance. <laughs> I don't think they're... A couple of them are Canadian. Anyway, but yeah, I was just playing with people challenging other clans to these battles that ultimately meant absolutely nothing in the long run but just it was it was the camaraderie that i formed with people i didn't even know um so that's where my gaming memories come now i actually have friends in real life who play video games so i'll play like a rocket league oh yeah we have our lovely group chat we played halo we played you know we played uh rainbow six for a little bit i mean some of them still do but i don't but yeah no the rainbow six is one of those i I picked it up again almost i don't want to say peer pressured into it i i I elected to buy it but i bought it knowing i had people to play with yeah and just yeah it was never the game for me no which kind of sucks i mean it's like i still have the game look it's like 60 bucks wasted on a game but it's spending money on on a hopeful experience like i look at games like destiny where i've put in uh, the game was I got the special edition, so it was like eighty bucks. Um, came with all the the one big expansion since then, which was another like forty, I think, because I got the special edition again. So I'm at a hundred bucks, and I've been put in like three hundred hours in that damn game. Yeah, you you definitely have. Yeah, no, you know enough about that one. Like Rocket League Two is like what fifteen bucks, and we've put in a few hundred hours each. We some of those guys are on every night. I've only played a few games. Rocket League. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I spent a lot of time on Rocket League. But that's it. I remember one night getting on with you guys and playing from like 11.30 to like 1 a.m. Like just game yeah. after game after game and shit talking. And it was just all of us. It was like the yeah. whole group. It was a good like eight people at least. And that was nice. And that was one of those games too I really like. And I, I've always said I wanted to get Paula to try it out. Because I know David, one of our friends, got his girlfriend or wife, sorry, Amanda to his play. His wife, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, Trevor. Trevor and Erica. Yeah, Trevor uh, got his girlfriend Erica. And it was just like the fact that it was a game that was so easy to pick up and there was no real like penalty to losing it was just like fun that anyone could pick it up try it out and play it yeah it was a very it's a very casual Mm -hmm. game there's not a lot of riding on it there's no like i mean yes there's mods that you can unlock but it's not based on oh it's literally just finish a match get a random mod exactly so it's just really having fun you could start a game have to run to the bathroom because of an emergency yeah and still get a you know really goopy glowing white trail from Gears of War that looks way too dirty <laughs> I, fucking hate I don't that think one. I unlocked that one. Oh, I have it I was showing it off to Bastone a few weeks ago and he was just laughing it looks like your car is just like of course he was them. of course he would enjoy that one um, but I was gonna go back to some other gaming memories was again my brothers and I when we picked up we got really into for a small time DDR like for Hanukkah one year yeah yeah we have a Hanukkah stories here Hanukkah uh, my brothers and I legitimately got as a gift for one night we got to share like a big gift at the end of the, uh, the eight nights yeah we got like one of those like high quality like plexiglass DDR dance mats okay like solid like metal framed like the thing was like 200 bucks wow but, like that was like legit and we got pretty into it I remember like, going away for like a weekend and coming back my brother had like mastered some song that I was like super impressed by on like the super high difficulties and then that I just felt moved over into the guitar here in the rock band ages and I know they're coming back now and part of me is like I really miss that like just having a few friends over listening to some good old songs and jamming out on like good plastic guitars and drums yeah I feel like you'd appreciate it. I just heard someone made a comment the other day talking about music I can't remember where I'm assuming a podcast <laughs> I followed okay uh, saying how they really felt bad for Weezer because Weezer was always the first song on every game's track list because it was the easy one. It's true. Say it ain't so. <laughs> hey, you don't have to make complex music to make, you know, mm-hmm. enjoyable music, right? No, no. Look at The Offspring. True. Look at The Offspring. Look at, uh, you <laughs> know, like uh, any punk band. The, the, I think punk punk music, one of their trademarks is the music's not tough to do. And in fact, it's it's deliberately rough 
and not perfect or not technically sound. Whereas then you have like prog rock or, or even like some forms of metal that pride themselves on being technically perfect. Mm -hmm. And both of them, you could argue one's better than the other or both are equally good or both have different appeals. And that's a whole other subject. I, I think, mean, we, uh, we, we touched a bit this, the beginning of this podcast, I said this morning, the beginning of this podcast. This morning. And musical taste, everyone's got them. I, I mean, like, prog rock. I mean, I Dream Theater's playing a show in town soon and I just, it's too expensive. But I really want to go. I never got into them. Oh, I got huge into them. A buddy of mine was like super big into like really artsy like dark behind the scenes underground bands like before yeah. they were big he was one of those guys okay. uh, actually uh, Jesse I think you know oh yeah I know Jesse <laughs> yeah but like he got me into Nine Channels. he got me into Dream Theater got me into a bunch of great bands so I mean thank you for some of my musical tastes what I've grown into better than uh, my buddy Evan showing me old Linkin Park music videos with Dragon Ball Z uh, scenes your buddy Evan yeah hmm. that, was, that was where I got into music was, was Linkin Park songs made music videos with Dragon Ball Z and like getting them through Kazaa. Ah, oh, Kazaa. Limewire. Limewire. Napster. I still love when I, I see people or like people's computers, like where they've got like the folder and they're like downloads for like Limewire and Kazaa. It's like, Ew, did you even use this? Like, uh, it's all about Frostwire. It was Frost always better. Wire, that was the. I remember Morpheus for a while was one of them. I never did Morpheus. Anyway, I'm opening my second beer. Is this time to. Uh... Yeah, why not? I, I feel like we normally like to keep it like a 30 minute, 30 minute thing, but. um. I feel like today's subject's one that's both near and dear to both our hearts, and we'll have a lot of time to we talk about it. We can definitely talk a lot about it. So. And uh, uh, speaking of which... Reddit. 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 The everyone's, websites. Everyone's favorite time-wasting websites. Oh my god, that site. I remember first hearing about it and just not mm -hmm. caring. That's it. And I really don't know when it became a site I visited, but... It's the point now where like when I'm looking something up online, like you know when you Google something and you're kinda of hoping to like not get the Yahoo Answers result. Yeah. Like I will actively search for things and then add Reddit at the end hoping to find a Reddit thread based on it. Because That's I it. genuinely trust it as a better source of information than most things. That's it. I couldn't place exactly when I started going on Reddit. Like you I heard about, I'm like, eh. Yeah. You know, like it was often mentioned in the same conversation as Dig. Yeah, and I think Dig, I was much more into, and again, I had mentioned before, listening to the owner of Dig, uh, Kevin Rose. Yeah. His podcast, Dig Nation. Dig Nation. With, uh, with Alex Albrecht, who I later followed into other podcasts, until I got into podcasts to begin with. Uh, but he used to do, like, he would take the, like, 10 or so top stories on Dig that week that he found interesting to talk about them on a podcast. Hmm. And it was, I mean, that's, that's when I first wanted to make a podcast, my idea was doing that on Reddit, just like picking out like, yeah. look at like top, you know, hundred posts in this week, pick out two and or three each and discuss those. Them. That's cool. That's but I feel like it's done. I feel like people do it already. Oh yeah, thing. it's definitely done. I'm sure there's a Reddit podcast out there, but we're better than you if you're listening. Which you obviously are, but <laughs> you have a Reddit account, right? Mm -hmm. You do. I know that I signed up for a Reddit account. Like, I was just a, you know, browser, guest, whatever. Yeah. And a lot of people said this as their reason for making a Reddit account. I'm one of those people. I signed up for a Reddit account because back when I was starting to surf Reddit, our atheism was a default. Yes. Sub. So, for those who don't know Reddit, I feel like we should give a little yes. mini breakdown. Yeah, go for it. And again, CGB Grey does this really well in one of his videos. He does. He does a Reddit video. He does. So I feel the best way to explain Reddit is it is a series of links to interesting content divided by categories known as subreddits. And the way it works, though, is you as a user can either thumbs up or thumbs down or upvote or downvote these posts. Yeah. And I mean, through complex algorithms based on how long it's been active and how popular it is and the controversy in the comments and how much it's being looked at. Yeah. And those upvotes and downvotes will rank them in order. So very often people refer to the front page being if you were to go to reddit.com right now and look at the top, I think it's 25 posts at a time. Yeah. What are the top 25? The big thing though is when you're visiting, what are you seeing? Because there are subreddits for literally everything. Yes. Uh, on that note, when you sign up for a Reddit account, there are a certain number of subreddits that you are already subscribed to. Those are called the default subreddits. Yeah. So there, if you're just going as a guest, they will be, I don't know what the noise was. It's your can. Sorry, that was my can. <laughs> no, it's so, totally fine. So things like our funny, our uh, um, picks, our gaming, I think our, I think. Uh, games or game, gaming, yeah. Gaming. And things like that. 
And they're constantly making change. They're constantly removing um, subreddits and adding subreddits as they see fit. Yeah, I think Atheist is no longer on there now. That's right. It's no longer on there. I'm actually curious because... if I can look up what is the current list of default subreddits. Yeah, while you do that, I'll talk about it a Yeah, please go more. ahead. So the default subreddits are the subreddits that you are already subscribed to once you sign up for a brand new Reddit account. You can unsubscribe from these subreddits and you can find other subreddits and subscribe to them. And generally where you find a subreddit is if you do reddit.com slash r, letter r, slash anything. So when I say r atheism, it's slash r slash atheism. And so for me, I had to, I create a Reddit account Yeah. because I did not want to see any more r atheism, r, r atheism links. Like I was done with that. I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't want to see it. Like, I, you know, they can do what they want, but I wanted to get rid of that from my from my feed. I think that's probably why I did it too. Less to cust- less to take things off it, but to add things to it. That too. So when you subscribe to a subreddit, it becomes part of your front page or your main view. Yes, so everyone has a personalized front page. And that's it. So when you're opening the front page, you may get... Uh, you know, our NHL and get all the NHL scores or our Montreal and get all the news about Montreal. Yeah. Someone else may have our funny, our advice, our car support. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just to give some examples, like I subscribe to one for Pokemon, one for Destiny. I got Overwatch on there now. Both the gaming um, news and the gaming meme one. And yeah, even just not, not even just hobbies, but there's also just things that you can go into. So for me, um, our casual conversation our best of Mm -hmm. um and there's some that are just a little more out there i mean there's one that i've always enjoyed which is our shower thoughts which are just people's yeah those little thoughts you have in the shower and just people can then comment and discuss these and the comments are also by an upvote system yeah so i mean generally there's a subreddit out there for whatever interests that you hold yeah Uh, and i know this is like for some of you this is probably like oh i know this but I mean, my mom listens to this show. I should at least let her know what the fuck Reddit is. That's it. So um, it's like... And then this is where her mom, I'm going to say, cover your ears, because there's also the NSFW stuff. NSFW stands for not safe for work, which means that anything in there, you probably should not open at work or school or around someone that you would not be comfortable seeing whatever. And that's it. And this can be pornographic because people do post. Yeah, there are like, plenty of porn. That's separate. it. There are so I've heard. Any. So I've heard. <laughs> so so um, research tells me I haven't looked into it. I, I've purely for scientific purposes. No, I mean there's an example of a subreddit I subscribe to that often uses that tag is R W T F or R what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. And it is just like really like insane things sometimes it's just like an unexpected result or like something really like disturbing it's also not just porn it's also things like gore and that's it like i've had some where it's like someone like shooting themselves in the foot and like actually seeing someone get shot like you know that's a little uh. so they'll use it and that's something that's built into the site is they'll tag that so even if you're on a subreddit like our videos and someone has a video of like a bank robbery and it's a little more gory at the end they'll mark it as not safe for work and yeah. again, the subreddits all have moderators for the most part, yes, whether it be do. something small where it's like the guy who created the subreddit moderates it, yeah. or a bigger one where there's actually a team of it, and they can kind of manage it, keep things organized. And all subreddits have their own sort of like, I don't want to say gimmicks, but their own sort of rules and regulations. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. I, again, I give an example. I visit the Pokemon subreddit where anything goes, post what you want, whether it be pictures or links or text or conversation or jokes or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I follow a subreddit like that I do for the Destiny game. Uh, and there's, it's very, like, it's no links, it's only text. If you have a link, you'll describe what it is and then link to it afterwards. Hmm. But you can't post directly to a photo or a video. Like, if you have, I had this amazing play, you would post, I was playing a match, da da da. You have to put and a little bit of content. And if you want to go see it here. To yes. kind of, and it, so part of Reddit is the system called Karma. Yes, Karma. Uh, again, very brief because I know a lot of you probably already know this. As you post things, comments, or content, and people upvote it or downvote it, you gain or lose Karma. Yes. So the more you post and the better your posts are liked, the more Karma you have. Yeah. When you post a link versus a comment, it's two different buckets of Karma. It's your comment Karma or your, or link, your karma. link Karma. Link Karma is usually the one people actually look at or care about. Mm-hmm. Because your comments, everyone comments, everyone gets upvotes on comments, it's just conversation. 
So on a subreddit like that, it keeps people from posting stuff and trying to get the clicks mm -hmm. because it's not worth anything to your karma score. Yeah. I mean, there's also Reddit Gold, but that that's a whole not nothing. I have Reddit Gold right now, actually. I, I don't have there. any, but it's not something to get into right now. Yeah, I don't, I don't really. I, yeah, I'm going I'm to just leave that one. It's another. If you care, go Google it yourself. I, I don't really I get say, it. I say let's talk a little bit about what's what is good about Reddit. And what, what, what for me, what's great about Reddit is there literally is a subreddit for anything that you need. So I follow a just a variety of subreddits. Like I can go into my into my Reddit account and give you an example of some of the mm -hmm. subreddits that I follow right now. Also, what app do you use for browsing Reddit? I'm curious. Narwhal. You and me both. Look at that. Yeah, I like Narwhal. It gives me what I need and I can manually enter I love how subreddit. As I opened I it, it crashed on me. <laughs> I feel really shitty. I'm sure it was just like on a page. So I, I follow things like... Um, okay, easy one. Our Game of Thrones. I funny I don't follow that one. I follow that one because I like to I like to see that. I follow our casual conversation, which is described as the friendliest place on Reddit, hmm. where it's just people talking about whatever they want. I also have oh our cooking for beginners. Um, Ooh, that's a good one for me because I don't know how to cook that well. Um, oh, there's also trick. a good one. Our explain like I am a. Oh, I have that one as well. That's a we great one. There. Um, so it's pretty much... Well, I'll, I'll give you the... Oh, excuse me, wrong. Sorry. I'll give you an example of what Explain Like I Am is. Oh, here we go. Explain the plot of Pokemon like you are Carl Picklington. I may have to go post this one. <laughs> <laughs> or Explain Game of Thrones like we're Vincent Vega and Jules Winfield. <laughs> so it's pretty much explain something as if you are... A someone character else. or someone. So that's a fun one. So there's serious subreddits and there's not so serious subreddits. Mm -hmm. And uh, also in our our Habs, of course, our yes, hockey. Of course. Um I'm also in let's see. Our McGill for my school, our Montreal, our Canada. And I was gonna say and our Montreal is a really interesting one because it really is about the city and people around the city. Mm -hmm. Like the number of times I found out about an event or some or something going on in our city because of that subreddit, it's yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. And I give an example of Paula, who is someone who will actually go and look at a like I'll rarely go look at a specific subreddit except for like maybe Destiny if the child wants to see what's going on new in the game or Pokemon and see what's new, like today was all announcements and stuff. But generally, I, I browse my front page and let it sort of sort out for me. Whereas Paula will rarely look at the front page and really just go to the few subreddits she goes to regularly. Like, I know she goes to um, our cruises. I mean, she sells cruises. So looking into cruises, what's going on, what's new, any news. People asking questions about their first cruise. And just, that's interesting. One that I think I got her hooked on initially is our map porn. And uh, not what it sounds like. It really is just really pretty maps or really amazing maps and information. Like I was in a say going through my list. I followed two very fun ones are our crappy design and uh, our design porn. You might notice I keep saying the letter R. <laughs> and it's a really weird habit, but it's the way they denote it subreddits. Is. It's the way they denote subreddits. And also a note on the porn thing. Yeah. There is the, the safe for work porn network where it's just like. Uh, I subscribe to ad porn, so it's it's really cool advertisements. I guess my marketing and that's degree, it. Design uh, porn is the same concept. Design, design porn, design porn is porn, just uh, food porn. porn, just tons of porn where it's not actual pornography. It's just yeah. things that look really really appealing to and someone believe, who has an interest in that. And I believe field. that actually, um, so we got a response on Twitter uh, from Shannon. Yes, I and can she had linked find us that. to one of them was abandoned porn. Abandoned porn is where I it's believe. like photos of abandoned buildings or abandoned cities or yes. like abandoned towns or abandoned factories. That's and right. just these gorgeous sets of photos. Yeah. No. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes. Our, I, I don't almost don't want to say it, but our only person who responded this week. She is, but she supports the podcast. That's it. And I mean, there's people who. Also, just spoke to us casually about Reddit, like yeah. and didn't feel they needed to comment. And again, a lot of coworkers I think are falling in that loop, where they're like, "Why comment on Facebook when I'm going to see them work in two days and just give them my spiel anyway?" Yeah, some people definitely do that as well, and mm -hmm. that's fine. Um, I was going to say something. I think my favorite subreddit right now has to be Subreddit Simulator. Yes, you got me hooked on this one, and this is a really bizarre one. And it's kind subreddit, of really meta. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to try to explain Please, it. Please, I'm still, curious to see how this works. Subreddit Simulator is one guy who creates algorithms to take, like, to combine the top posts from certain subreddits and put them together and have bots post 
as if they were a typical user from that subreddit. So for example. So I mean, again, like really, really the lowest end of AI, like it's really just algorithms taking bits and pieces of the top posts from those subreddits. Yeah, so the top post in subreddit simulator is Latina girl explains why she hates Trump and turns into a human pen as a Lyft driver. <laughs> So that's all top today. So all top today is just combining and aggregating all of the um, top posts of Reddit for the day. I, I gotta say, my favorite part of subreddit simulator, because uh, again, even the comments, like you can't go in and comment, only the bots that's can. That's right, you, you are allowed. not allowed to comment. There you is, can upvote uh, and downvote, but you cannot comment. If I'm not yourself. mistaken, there is a subreddit simulator. Subreddit simulator, or subreddit sim meta, where yes. you can discuss. Where you can <laughs> go in and discuss these things going on and laugh about them behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite thing though with it is because I oh, here's another one. Sorry. Oh please go. This is a jokes subreddit simulator. Okay. It just says gay guys are having dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and and other subreddit simulator bots respond to this, and their posts, their responses make no sense. So for example, Earth porn subreddit simulator in a response to well actually hang on I'll read what what jokes ss says in his in his post cuz his topic is gay guys are having dinner and I apologize immediately for the language he turns to a mexican bo- mexican boy and said haha you're going to get a drink from the river the, the young man the young man replies he is not a faggot he thinks and runs to her side to see what's wrong so earth porn subreddit simulator replies hmm in hindsight, it might have to look at the rest area with Pewitt's Nest and Devil's Lake, both within a lake, all for what it is the southern part where I live. The less and less people take those types of rainbows, and it is a beautiful place. So, some of it makes absolutely no sense, but and you get these gems. That's my favorite part, because sometimes they do make a little bit of sense, like just enough that you're trying to figure out what the fuck it meant. And that's why subreddit sim meta comes in, because you have these people who turn your attention to the best, you know... To the best posts. But I was going to say, though, so I often browse, like, just my front page, like, my personal custom page. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's just a habit. I don't always look at what subreddit it is. I'll just read the title, and I can kind of figure out, like, if a subject is, oh, the new trailer for Pokemon Sun and Moon. I'm like, okay, cool. One of my Pokemon subreddits. Or, oh, I got an amazing kill with such a character in whatever game today. I'm like, okay, I can figure it out. But then getting one where, like... The best cheeseburger is the one that is made from the man who is also in the lake. And I've got to take a minute of like, the f- what? Yeah. And then like double take and go, oh, it's separate. It's similar. That's it. Sometimes it just appears in your in your feed. Yeah, because you don't still... realize it's a separate <laughs> simulator. But some of them are so coherent. Yeah, there was one about there was one about a cheeseburger. I can't remember the exact one now, but it legit had me like clicking on it and reading the comments for like a good solid like thirty seconds before I thought to go back. Yeah. And this also leads me to another fun comment though. Uh, comments in general is kind of the fame of Reddit. Yes. So do you know any of the famous Redditors? There's uh, Karmanaut. Mm-hmm. There's Galloboob. There was Unidan, but he... Oh, poor uh, Unidan. Unidan had Vargas. That's the one I was going to bring up. I just Vargas saw Vargas post. One. Yeah. So what we're referring to here, for those who might not know, is there are some people who have been a name for themselves on Reddit for doing certain things. It's exactly as pathetic as it sounds. Oh, it really is. Uh, Vargas, for example, is one person who will respond to a comment or to a thread and just write these elaborate, like, seven to ten paragraph stories that are just, like, complete out of nowhere. And people will, like, you can sort of see people being, like, you know, responding, being, like, read the first, like, two paragraphs and then said, I should scroll up and see who wrote this. Damn it, Vargas. He probably also, I believe he has his own subreddit where people just, you know. Discuss the Vargas post. Discuss his post because it's just, it makes no sense. I don't know how this person, whoever he is or she, uh, comes out with They should become a writer. (laughs) They should definitely become a writer because this is absurd things. You get to like this point where all of a sudden like, you get to a point like one or two paragraphs in where it's like, wait a minute. And you scroll (laughs) up and you see, oh, Vargas. That was someone's response to him yesterday was like, was the process of reading one of Vargas's posts. Step one. Begin reading. Step two, get curious. Step three, scroll up to check username. Step four, is it Vargas? Step five, yep, it's Vargas. Step six, eh, finish reading it. (laughs) Because he is a genuinely good writer. He's a good writer. He Um, or she, sorry, again, we don't know. There's also the novelty accounts, so like there's Storyteller Bob. Yeah, Shitty Watercolor. Shitty, I follow Shitty Watercolor on Twitter now. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Um, There's Poem for Your Sprog. 
There's um, there's a bunch of novelty accounts that only respond in a certain manner. Yeah, and, and there's, there's also there's also poorly timed Gimli, which is probably my favorite one, <laughs> because what he will do or or they will do, I should say, um, is just whenever there's something that goes on, all of a sudden he'll just write, and my axe, <laughs> but it won't make any sense in the context. So the, the novelty accounts are fun too. So there I guess was, we're talking a lot about yeah, the, just the, like, just the fun of Reddit. It's such a fun it can community be. to be in. It can be a little dark, and I did want to bring up some of the... I want to start with a really dark story of Reddit. Get it out of the way. Yeah, go for it. And that's a, it's a scary place because it is that you are anonymous in a very large way. Like, there is virtually no way to track someone. It's not like Twitter or Facebook where you might yeah. link to things. And a lot of people keep themselves very private. Yes. You'll often see the term throwaway accounts. Yes. Where um, I, I can recall people posting about, like, the first time... You, like, uh, another common subreddit is... Um, Ask Reddit is one I like where people will just ask a question. Yeah, those are nice. I mean, some of them are probably not true, but... No, and that's it. You can always... The grain of salt of who was telling the truth. But you'll have people be like, uh, have you ever been sexually assaulted? Tell us your story. And they'll put the... They'll, they'll request serious answers only, and they, they do enforce that quite well to moderators. Yeah. And people will state, like, hey, this account's a throwaway. And you'll look at the history, and they have no history if they've created the account that day to tell the story. And they'll tell some, like, really dark shit. They will. And I mean, I feel with this anonymity, with this mob mentality of this community, one of the scarier moments was they attempted to try to figure out who committed the Boston bombing. Yes. It's looked at now as kind of a joke because it was ridiculous them trying to do it and make fun of them for but it But at the time, they came very close to ruining an innocent person's life. Yeah. And I feel like it was right on the heels of another event where 4chan, who, another uh, popular message board site that... People often joke about being shit. The stuff gets posted to 4chan. I think it's the good stuff is then filtered out and put on Reddit. And yeah. I feel like every community, Tumblr, Reddit, 4chan, 9gag, funny junk, they all do the same thing. It's all stealing from each other at this point. Yeah. And the occasional original content holder is nice. But I believe right before the Boston bombing, there was another case of Reddit or 4chan or a combination of the two tracking down a woman who had been caught on film throwing out a bag of cats. Like, uh-huh. she legitimately put some cats in a bag, and, like, you see her there with the cats in the bag, ties it up, dumps it in a dumpster, and closes the lid and walks away. Which and is, just yeah. using context clues of, like, okay, uh, you can see the street behind it. There's an Arby's or whatever restaurant uh, next to a Walmart. So, and this is, and we can clearly tell from the time code, it was taken in the U.S. at this time. Uh, and just, like, so many little things, and they finally figured out who it was, and then it's the... It was the parking lot of a building. Yeah. And it's a private building, so only people who live there could do this. And they, like, got someone, found out the addresses and all the names. It was just, it was insane. And eventually they found her Facebook, and I, I finally I think she was reported to the police. Yay, you did a good thing, but that's kind of really creepy powers to have. There's also, in any of those brigades, there's always the people who take it a little too far as mm-hmm. well, where it's like death threats and like yeah you know, no calling their house and uh, you know harassing either the person themselves or their family mm-hmm. or so there's definitely the scary side to the things the scary side and just reddit in, reddit in general like yes there's some really really useful subreddits like learn to cook learn to do this mm-hmm. you know there's personal finance there's you know hockey where you can talk about your own you know you can talk about your interests mm-hmm. if you keep it at that I think reddit's a great experience but there are definitely some reddits and I can get a little dark. Well, for example, there was the whole hubbub over the banning of fat people hate. Yes, this was a, a community that was generally comedic. It was very much done in jest. It was dark. It was literally people posting pictures of fat people, whether they Googled them or took them themselves on their phone. Yeah. And just hating on fat people. Yes. Which was seen as like a... I mean, I get it. Definitely. I, I kind of agree. It was just sort of a very harassing... Like, they were probably... I believe they were harassing people. They were... To my knowledge, never directly. Never directly. It was, it I don't was know. shaming. Okay. I don't so, know the whole thing. So, but I agree with getting rid of it. Agree. I'm not going to sit here trying to defend a group of people committing hate crimes, essentially. Yeah. But from... Uh, there was a... Right around the time it got banned, another... Someone I follow online was talking about it a bit. And they were actually a slightly heavier person themselves. Mm-hmm. And they just enjoyed the humor of it. 
like they they self proclaim themselves to be shit lords was the term they used. Yeah, shit lords was the term. That's how they described themselves as people who just made fun of fat people. Yeah. And, like, just they had a whole community around it. And, like, you know, if you posted enough and were popular enough, you could be promoted from shit lord to, like, different bullshit titles they had. And it was all done in jest. And it was, to my knowledge, never done, like, directed to the person. Like, had someone had their photo taken, it was never like, let's find out who he is and go Facebook stalk him and, like, you know, hate on him. It was just people being facetious and shitty and sarcastic about, hey, we're fit people, we hate fat people. Right. Whether people really went there with the intent of hating fat people because they were actively against it. Yeah. Or people like this person I won't name out of their own safety, uh, this comedian who just went because it was the stupidest thing ever and it was funny to laugh at and, like, he never posted, just made fun of it. Yeah. And, I mean, I, again, get it. There was a lot of subreddits that were removed. There was a huge wipe around that time where a lot of the not safe or worse subreddits that were a little more risque were removed. Yes. I mean, there's our creep shots mm-hmm. that also got removed. And I believe there's a whole network of subreddits that got removed along with it. And creep yeah. shots is generally just taking pictures of unsuspecting women, either like upskirt or just pictures of women in tight clothing or anything Yeah, which like is, again, really fucking creepy. We're not sitting here defending this. I didn't even know about that one, but that's a really creepy subreddit. But it's some people's thing and they're going to find a community that does it and do it. Yes. Like, there was... Uh, I mean, there's just there's so many. But I also want to go over some of the more fun ones. Because, again, I feel like Reddit... Most times you hear about it, it's because people of Reddit did something shitty. It is. Because... Okay, before we go to the fun ones again, um, I feel like we cannot pass over not just the creepy subreddits, but also the, the fact that Reddit is... While there are a multitude of different cultures and different different types of people represented on Reddit because it's such a huge website with mm-hmm. millions of users, there is definitely a certain group or a certain demographic that is the most widely represented on Reddit, and that is the straight white American male. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it's become an in-joke almost to post in the comments that, hey, I'm actually... A, like People will actually be like oh, no, I'm a woman, or oh, no, I'm black, or oh, no, I'm Asian, or yes. whatever it might be. So Because it's so rare to be one. Thing. So a lot of this, whenever it comes to to issues, and whenever it comes to serious discussion, a lot of what Reddit does is it looks at it from this privileged perspective. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of it, unfortunately, it's just you have a lot of this, you know, anti-feminism anti-culture anti this you know anti anti gender anti sec you know sexuality unfortunately that is a part of reddit and when reddit is largely that demographic you're gonna get a lot of people speaking like oh feminists are stupid oh you know yes black people i'm not racist but black people do this generally or mexican people yeah. do this generally or gay people do this and and then because they're surrounded by people of their own kind, they are justified and they're supported and they're this and they're that. So there's definitely parts of Reddit that are very much not cool. Agreed. Not- so part of what I wanted to do today, the reason that I chose, the, I know this was, I think you added this to the list initially, but I really wanted to talk about it because Reddit to me is something that has really in the last few years caused me to grow quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and to share a few examples is something that has spun off of Reddit that I think is wonderful is Reddit GIFs. It started as an experiment, I think, seven, eight years ago? Yes. Where Reddit like wanted to try creating the world's largest secret Santa. Yes. They had a few rules. You're counted to be at least six months old. You couldn't just sign up for it randomly. That's right. They, they did ensure against... Uh... Yeah. And even, like, to this date, I have gotten burnt once or twice. It happens. It sucks. It's but, just I mean, part of it, I think. That's it. Right now, it's so well managed. Like, you can report if a gift isn't received. Uh, if that is the case, they get a strike against them and they until they can prove something. Like, I had a, I had issues last year. Uh, anyway, so I'll return to that in a moment. And it has since grown. So it started off as that one big secret Santa around Christmas. <coughs> yeah. And now they do them every few months with different subjects. I just received a lovely Lego set. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw on the table when you came in. I a did. little robot. I did Very nice build last night. And that was from an, uh, an exchange via Reddit GIFs themed around the Lego subreddits, which I also follow because I love Lego. Mm-hmm. And 
it's just it's fun because it links you up with someone whether it be and you have the option of within the same continent or country or worldwide so I yeah, you can choose if, yeah, yeah so to help with the shipping costs I always choose international because I think it's more fun I actually got a girl in Paris or I keep saying Paris in somewhere north of Paris in France and funny enough the person who got me was also in France well, that's fine I also I, I get that a lot where I'll get someone in a country and someone else in the same country gets me hmm and I feel like it's such a fun experience. And I've met some great people. None that I've, I've, I can say I've ever stayed in contact with to a great extent. But people I've had great conversations with and just shared some great times and a good smile, whether it be digitally over the internet miles away or thanking them for their gift or being thanked for a gift That's by it. somebody. And it's just, it's such a great community. And it's just, Reddit creates so many great moments like that. Uh, another subreddit I follow, and again, it's mostly for the inspiration, is I follow uh, LGBT. Okay. Yeah. And it really is just it, a lot of the posts, it's people, their story coming out to their parents and how accepting it was and just as inspirational or people being, you know, a friend of mine came out today and I don't know how to handle it and she's having trouble with her parents. What does she do? And just getting to watch these interactions and just read through them and Heck, I've thrown my hat in. I've, I've given some comments. I've offered to be the person to talk to. I've said, hey, I've known people in similar situations or I've been through things that might relate to this. Let me help you out. Yes. Let absolutely. me empathize and share with you. And it just, it's really, really magical what that site can do for you. Yes. If you use it right. If you use it properly. And right. I think that's, again, one of those media bullshit things where they just, it's portrayed, portrayed wrong. I mean, a lot of when, when Reddit does come into the news, a lot of it is when it's negative. Mm-hmm. Um, on the subject of the gifts, though, uh, what the gifts is great for is there's also, especially around the holiday time, is, yeah, Secret Santa, but mm-hmm. some Reddits themselves have their own Secret Santa. So I did the R Hockey Secret Santa. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got somebody in Minnesota, so I sent them their gift, and then someone in, I think, Vancouver or Alberta... BC or Alberta got me and they sent me in something really, really awesome. So, I, yes, I agree with you that Reddit definitely has the potential to be this great tool if you mm-hmm. use it the right way. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are people who use it to conform or to support their... Their own agendas. Their, their own, own agendas. That's it. Yeah. And, and I want to get off the negatives of where we keep going back to them a little bit because they really are dark and I really hope we can discourage people from doing those things. But, I mean... We're two people. We have our opinions. That's all Reddit really is. is just people Thing throwing is, opinions you around. Can't, you can't talk about Reddit without talking about no. the dark side of it. And, and that's why is. I want to really make sure that if you're walking away from this podcast today, I feel like every time we have a subject, it's more of a lesson than a, than a topic. Is that there is a lot of good. I mean, the Reddit gifts, uh, meeting new people, uh, finding people in common. Yeah. I mean, our Montreal, I know I'm going to, I've, I've posted things there. I'm going to a concert. Who else is in? Or people suggesting restaurants to each other. I mean, I literally took my fiance to, uh, before when we were still dating. Yeah. Not engaged. Uh, this whole dilemma, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. We went to Paris. I partnered up with somebody I found on the R Paris subreddit and had them pack us a picnic of like wine and cheese. They threw in wine glasses and a bottle opener and a baguette. Oh, wow. And I had sort of figured out, okay, we're getting off the... We're going to be at this metro station this time, and timing never worked out. We ended up texting part of it, and I ended up ruining the surprise, but mm-hmm. they had packed this whole thing for us, and I just transferred them the money and bought them ready gold as a gift, as a little thank you. And that only happened because we had a community, a sub, a Reddit that was so open, this open channel of communication to share. There's two more I knew I wanted to bring up before we ended today. Uh, sorry, I'm still on the show a bit towards the end here. Do it. Oh, um, to, uh, if it, Reddit is also very famous. If you ever go to Reddit, there's a subreddit for uh, out of the loop, kind of like catching up on like what the end joke is at the time. That. That's a great one. It is a good one. Very um, useful. There's, I think there's another one too I have to look into, and I know out of the loop sometimes covers it, where there's kind of the legends of Reddit, like the, and people will reference some of the legends, whether they be darker ones or more brilliant ones. But there was one that was quite famous, and it was um, a guy had jokingly... Uh, his like wife had bought a bunch of pregnancy tests, uh, like in triplicate, and used them. And like she was completely pregnant, so she's like, I have all these like, extra tests. I thought I'd piss on for fun, and he posted the picture saying, "I guess I'm pregnant." And someone posted, going, "Well, the pregnancy test checks for this chemical in your urine to verify whether or not you're pregnant. Men shouldn't have this unless they have uh, whatever. I think it was testicular cancer, or something." Yeah. 
do you do you have and he's like no and he's like, have you been for an exam and he's like no and he like went and checked and he responded later on he kind of like caught up and said yeah i went to a doctor because of this and it turns out they yeah there was something wrong and they caught it early enough they were able to start treating for it before i actually got cancer yeah i yeah. mean like that is one in a million chance that a stupid practical joke of pissing on a pregnancy test to see if you're pregnant as a guy led to a man getting rid of i mean catching cancer at early enough stages to make it treatable well, yeah, there's also the, the, the guy who posted on Reddit saying, you know, someone keeps leaving notes in my house. Ah, Sailor, I was going to go to the post-it notes. Yeah, this, the post this, this, this one, again, falls into one of my favorite subreddits, are creepy. Are creepy. That's it. Someone like, keeps, this, this, this sounded like a creepy yeah, story. This guy keeps writing about how someone keeps leaving post-it notes in my house. And they were, like, innocuous notes, like, reminders to, like, get milk or That's reminders it. It to do things. nothing like, I'm watching you or you're next. And then... So he wrote about it, and then the first comment was, you should check um, and see if there's carbon monoxide in your house. Yeah, because carbon monoxide can cause memory loss. Yeah. So you would be writing more notes yourself and even forgetting about the notes. He thought it was his, like, landlord breaking in and being creepy or, like... Yeah. And, like, that was a lot of the comments about that, too. But this one came out, and I guess for the reason it struck him, and he decided to check, and he bought a carbon monoxide uh, detector. And, uh, sure enough... Carbon monoxide. So... Reddit saved this guy's life, pretty much. And again, huge grain of salt with this one. We don't know these people personally. Yes. We don't know if these were just staged. Whatever the case might be, I choose to believe some of these stories happened. I mean, a few of them are, like, legend enough that I believe that the, if they were fake, someone would have fact-checked them. Yes. But it's incredible that, again, in a world where you can do so many things, I mean, you, I see on the R Montreal, I see people saying, hey, you know what, I was at this event at whatever location, and I lost my wallet. That's right. And I've seen people, like, you know, post on Reddit, uh, just got this in the mail today, and it was their wallet from, like, six years ago they lost in a camping trip in Maine, and they yeah. live in California. That's true. And, like, the person had, like, tracked them down and, like, realized they'd moved three times, and, like, it's just, there can be really inspirational stories, really fun moments. Yes. And I think if I can... If anyone listening is sitting there going, like, have you ever really tried Reddit? Create an account. Remove any subreddits you don't care about. Like, I don't follow the politics. I don't follow... That's it. Uh, any, like, I know some of the some of the standard ones now. Like, I follow... Aw, it's cute. It's fun pictures of animals. I follow funny. Yeah, they're fun jokes, and they're good memes, and there's, you know, comics and little sketches, and they're usually topical. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Just do a search for your hometown. The video game or the movie you like or the TV show you yeah. like your favorite sports team and see what there is. There are so many things. I mean, AMAs already are a huge thing now. Uh, ask me anything where people who, again, they have a system to verify and they'll always get proof so they can really like the moderation team's great here. Yeah. And I mean, who was uh, really recently who just did one was um, Andy Samberg. Uh, the whole Andy crew, Samberg the, just did one. The whole crew of Lonely Island. Island. And again, it's promotional for their movie. They legitimately answer questions and have fun with it. And even that has their own series yeah, of jokes. I can even give you uh, Dolph Lundgren is doing one. <sighs> Carl Picklington is doing one. Oh, really? Yeah, second Carl Picklington uh, mentioned. I wonder if he'll actually answer the uh, question about Pokemon now. And it doesn't just have to be, it doesn't have to have to be a, a celebrity. It's like, for example, this guy says, I am a Magic the Gathering Pro Tour champion. Uh, remind or, me to check that one out later. That's kind of interesting. Okay, I will. Yeah. And people will request AMAs. I know there was one a while ago where someone requested an AMA from Left Shark from uh, oh, yeah, two Left years Shark ago, Katy Perry's at the uh, Super, Bowl. Per- Super Bowl performance. And he came and did one. And of course, they verified. They reach out to him. Like, you know, he reaches out saying, hey, I want to do this AMA. They reach back and Here's get like, one. A Tiananmen Square survivor. Oh, fuck. That's an interesting one. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard is doing one from Jurassic World. Yeah. That's um, something else, too, I've seen. Going back to the Tiananmen Square one, is there's been a lot, too, where I've seen AMAs where, like, my grandfather is 103 years old, and he's a survivor of World War One and World War Two, and he's been through so much, and he's been through concentration camps and all this stuff, and he's agreed to sit down with me today and let me answer and, let, and take your questions, and I'll transcribe them for you. And just, like, these amazing moments you would never normally get. Yeah. To talk to these people. And, again, they're usually very fun. A lot of times they're lighthearted and they know what they're doing. And it's just, it's, again, another one of those subreddits I feel is just so amazing. And most people just don't ever hear about it. Yeah. Agreed. So, I guess we're coming, we're, we're on an hour right now. So, I think You if know we, what? I don't mind going all over. It's a really fun subject. That's it. Not I mean, by much, but, like, two extra minutes. If you have anything else you want to so share. so much to say about Reddit. It's just... 
There was also the cool April Fool's joke they did this year, which was the, the Robin joke, where it's like you would enter a chat room with one other person and you both vote to grow and you get into a chat room with four people now. So instead of two you before, and you keep voting to grow and you would keep just exponentially getting bigger and bigger mm-hmm. and bigger. But if at one point you all vote to stay, you'd actually create a subreddit with just those people in that group. Really? Yeah. I did I didn't see this one. I no, yeah, I really reddit. didn't see this because I remember the year before was the button. The button. They basically created a subreddit called yeah. the button. And at the top of the page, there was a button counting down from 10 to 10 to assuming zero. But because zero. there were so many people that kept pressing the button and never went down to zero, I don't That believe. was it. Once you press the button, you couldn't press it again. And, but and it reset the timer. Resets. And then actually on the subreddit next to your name, it would track what time it was when you clicked it. Yeah. So there was like a whole thing of like, if you made it, if you were like a seven second, you were like really the elite because it was the hardest thing to get because it just kept resetting so quickly with so many clicks. Yeah. And there were people who were like never pressers and they would like, they had like a whole like cult of like never pressing. <laughs> uh, and eventually I mean, the timer I think did hit zero finally. They finally hit a point where it just, there was not enough people checking and caring. Yeah. And it did hit zero and just nothing happened. Nothing happened. It the was subreddit's the, still there. All it the was an April still Fool's there. joke after all. Yeah. There was the year before where they split everyone up randomly into team uh, orange, orange, red, red and, and periwinkle. periwinkle. Yeah. What team were you? Orange, red. Yeah, baby. Orange, red. We did win, didn't we? I don't remember. Yeah, and it just art was basically like, you know, everyone on that team's karma from the April 1st to I think the 10th or something, they just tracked it. Yeah. And a team, whatever team won. Oh, man, it was hilarious. <laughs> like, there's still to this day, you'll go on and people will mention, like, oh, Team Periwinkle. Like, yeah. if someone posts a picture of, like, whatever that has the color blue in it, and someone goes, oh, I love that shade of blue, and they'll be like, no, it's actually Periwinkle, and it'll just escalate. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean,. Reddit is... I was in awkward silence. Sorry, I didn't mean to... No, I went to take some beer as you said your sentence, and I was like, I assume you were going to keep talking. And yeah, I was, really was going to keep talking. I, I guess, like, what it is that Reddit... The thing about Reddit and the beauty of Reddit for me is you choose what Reddit is for you. That's it. Reddit is your Reddit. If you're just checking the website without logging in, it can seem very bizarre because it's so much junk thrown in you. Yeah. Currently, I pulled a list. It's 50 subreddits of the default right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, they include things, a few I even subscribe to, uh, Futurology, which is just posts about modern technology and evolution. Oh, I'm not on that Um, or science, just science stuff. Uh, TIFU, or Today I Fucked Today Up. Today I Fucked Up. Which That's I don't like, even, even subscribe if to. If anyone remembers the site, FML. Pretty much. Uh, our jokes, music, get motivated, food, DIY, uh, writing prompts. Oh, how did we not even talk about TILs? Today I Learned. Today I learned an good. entire subreddit of people were going today I learned whatever they learned and a link to supporting for article. example the most popular today I learned post is probably today I learned Steve Buscemi was a firefighter who volunteered to help out 9-11 relief I think that is all the top post of all time kind of yeah fun. that probably is because yeah. people people post it all the time but it's just things like that random facts that people learn I'm like oh I'm going to share this with the I, my favorite thing is when I find one where I've also just learned it like I was the other day I was watching a YouTube video of whatever YouTuber yeah and or no, it was it was a it was like door clear college humor had done a post of like top like five like shitty moments on movie sets yeah and then one of them was about Alfred Hitchcock and someone's like TIL that day was today I learned Alfred Hitchcock did this horrible thing and I'm like oh, and then of go. course you do the dick thing and you respond going oh yeah I watched that YouTube channel also yeah like calling out you, you also call them out you expose them and I even love that too where people will like you'll often see the I came here to say this. Or someone will be like, oh, this is a great reference to Doctor Who, unbeknownst to the person who posted it, and make a Doctor Who joke, and people go, that's all I came here to see was the Doctor Who reference in the comments. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, again, I follow the Doctor Who server, it's a great one. I do not. I'm not surprised you, Mr. Not a Big Fan of Sci-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, like I said, Reddit is a great place if you curate, if you self-curate. Mm-hmm. You can definitely find you can definitely find really really terrible subreddits. Like there are yeah. subreddits. There's literally there's one that says R. I'm not gonna say it, but R N words. Oh yeah, no, I I I'm, I didn't even know, but I'm sure it exists. It does exist, unfortunately. But there's also silly um, ones like R bird with arms, and it's literally photoshops of birds with arms. Yeah. Or Hitler in shorts. Hitler in shorts. Um, um, what is the? I can't remember the exact name of it now, and I apologize, but it's. Some guy started it, and it was just pictures of his roommate sleeping. 
Yeah. It was uh, purely comedic. It was like pictures of wh- whatever his name is sleeping. Paul or... Uh, pictures of Paul or like Steve sleeping. And it just, it escalated uh, to other people being allowed to post in there. So it's always pictures of so people sleeping and they just claim the name there's Steve. also our John Cena, which is just pictures of potato salad. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, some of those weird. My, oh, my favorite, my favorite. Can I please one last one? Yeah. Our Super Bowl. Okay. Have you seen this one yet? No, I haven't. It's a subreddit dedicated to superb owls. Superb owls. <laughs> <laughs> so if you actually want the Super Bowl, it's our NFL Super Bowl or our the Super Bowl or something like that. Yeah. But someone already, like, someone, like, realized this, that there was no subreddit for the Super Bowl and snatched it early and claimed it. And you can make your own subreddits, too. It's the cool thing. Yes, yeah, so you can make your if own. If you realize there is no subreddit for that really obscure 70s TV show you're watching because there's not enough... Fa- you can go and say, create subreddit, give yeah. it a name. I'll even go out there and say that now in the classroom, some teachers are making subreddits for their class. Like, you know, just, uh, I'll just use one of my classes, ENGL391. Those of you who follow me on Twitter knew mm-hmm. I had that going on. So like, imagine if my, my teacher had said ENGL391, this is our subreddit, post anything relevant to, well, it was a Netflix class, so post anything relevant to Netflix in here. And so again, can, I mean, those of you listening, thinking like, I can go subscribe to that subreddit and fuck with it. Uh, it is managed. You, is they so can managed. control whether it's invitation only. Yeah, or, it could be private. You need, you could you could have to be invited to it, or even if it's open, if you go in and start posting like dicks, 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 eat shit, dicks, and they'll ban you from they'll it. They'll ban you and they'll delete your posts. So it, it's not it was, like an open. There's, it's not like a cork board where you can just stick your own thing yeah, on there. Some of them are. Some, some of them are a little yes, more open, and are. again, it depends. Um, like, I recently, I had a uh, little moment I, I mentioned to you earlier. I had uh, some uh, chats with uh, Blizzard's technical support, Blizzard the game developer, uh, and I just had a really good experience. that We kind of got into role-playing with each other a little bit, oh, not in fun. a sexual way, but, like, <laughs> in, in, in the, it wasn't so much like, oh, help me with this issue. It was the, I begeth upon thee thy help among my quest to recover these digital items that have been lost of me. And, like, just kind of going into a little bit of jest and playing along with each other. Yeah. And the guy got really into it, so I screen capped the whole thing and posted it to our gaming, and it got deleted. Because this is not news or relevant to the gaming culture. This is purely fun and comedic. We suggest trying our games instead. And I went there, and I posted it, and I've gotten tons of upvotes and tons of comments and tons of conversations starting. You know, great yeah. opportunity. So, I mean, there is a place for everything, and everything has its place um, I was going to bring up before really quick was the there's a subreddit whose name I've also forgotten which I think is called uh, uh, I'll Ban You and it's just anyone can post but as soon as you post you get banned hmm. and it's just one dude who just bans everyone who there posts. literally is a subreddit for everything like that's it if you if you enjoy anything in life or you need help you're depressed you don't know how to come out to your parents you you need don't to- understand Game of Thrones and want to learn it better I'm sure there's one about explaining Game of Thrones yeah uh, you know, you need recommendations for books or music. You want to find uh, a ride to Vancouver tomorrow, a road trip across America. Yeah. I guarantee you, with a few minutes of looking, you will find it on Reddit. Yeah. With that, I think we should start wrapping up. We should. We, we've hit the hour, even with editing. I'm sure we'll be past an hour. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Yeah, it's not that bad. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the time right now. It's good. The usual. The Twitter follows. Yeah. At... At Ryan W. Yeah, again, right on our logo, along That's with true. mine, at Boxless Thought. Woo! Uh, I also have to point out that I'm, I'm going to shame you a little bit. You got mad at me in the logo when I put at, at Ryan W. Yes. The AT was lowercase AT. Yeah, the versus the uppercase. A and the A wasn't uppercase, like That's you have right. it in your handle. I mean, you will find me either way. Yeah, it's not case sensitive. I mean, look at mine. The B and the T are both capitalized because yeah. it's the way I use it. That's what. Capital A, capital R, capital W is the way I use it. Yeah. So I just, so you know, I want to. It was just, it was a really funny. I felt like you were really pissed about it. I knew you weren't. No. But I, I felt like, like hey, there was a lot of hate. In the it. interest of accuracy. <laughs> so I did correct it. Uh, and again, you'll find on there the other uh, the other Twitter handle to uh, Airy Smiles or Andrea, our uh, artist. Thank you, Andrea. Again, every episode we will continue to say thank you. We for love this Ruby art. also, and we love Rooster Teeth. Oh man, Ru- have you been watching Ruby Chippy? I have not. Actually. They're really cute. They're short, but they're really I'll cute. I'll get on that. I uh, really are on you that. a sponsor? I am. Okay, good. Yeah, I just bought the sponsor shirt. By the way, nice. Congrats. I picked up that in the V neck. Nice. They had, they had the sale going on. Anyway. Anyways, that's the show for today. Thank you for listening. If you listened, if you didn't listen, you should have. We love you. Why are you here?
Yeah, that's very... What? I just skipped to the end to hear the sign-offs, <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, that's the best part of every episode is you singing us out. True. Oh, we should get a subreddit going. I'm thinking of a jingle. Oh, uh, uh, we have a jingle coming. I just checked my wrist for the time and I don't have a watch on. I took it off. Then I will just sign us out. Uh, speaking of which... Yeah, I love you. I love you more.